I would like to uh, provide to you a short uh, report uh, on our recent attempts to uh, simulate observations of orbital motion uh, in strong gravitational field, uh, actually close to black holes. I will completely skip <coughs> anything on uh, neutron stars and light orbs. Okay. Uh, I will focus mostly on uh, uh, on the kind of spotlight features propagating uh, through the accretion disk. Uh, first, I would like to, or I would like to mention that uh, uh, that results. I'm showing uh, are coming uh, rather from a large collaboration from a couple of people uh, from Czech Republic as well as uh, uh, from, from uh, other uh, countries. Uh, so, uh, as I said, I will focus mostly. Can you speak a little bit louder, please? Okay, I will, <laughs> I will try. Uh, sorry, I am actually a little bit uh, cold, but. Uh, Yes, so is it better now? Can you yeah. hear me? Okay, so I will try to keep it. Stand in the middle. Pardon? Stand in the middle. It's a problem, but I will try to, uh, to speak uh, a little with a little bit of more of power. Uh, tell me when, please tell me, Pavel, when uh, it is. I'm it hearing is. so well. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, but there's some problem. <laughs> So basically, what uh, we attempted to do was uh, to took uh, okay. We take a few uh, simple uh, QPO models and uh, uh, we tried to mimic uh, a co concrete source, but uh, we actually do not attempt to really simulate the whole source uh, since. Uh, all these present attempts to 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 simulate uh, the complete phenomenology are not much successful yet. So we take an uh, empirical model of the source behavior, uh, like uh, certain variability, uh, certain uh, spectral behavior, and uh, with, without the high frequency variability and. Uh, photons produced by uh, concrete uh, model. Like we take uh, photons from, uh, from, uh, from torus or photons from, uh, from spots. Uh, we make uh, the analysis of this and looking uh, for the results. And also, uh, since pre at present it uh, could have some sense, we are trying to compare uh, this type uh, of results for RXT and for the future uh, for the future missions. So this is an uh, example uh, for simple uh, situation with uh, small spot-like features uh, close to the, to the ISCO, and these are these are uh, say theoretical uh, variability and. Uh, spectra of such a spot as expected for uh, observer far away from the uh, from the black hole and uh, of course there are many param parameters and uh, I'm not going in this talk to uh, make any any uh, summary uh, of uh, how it looks like in the parameter space so I'm taking just an example here uh, so we can see that in this amplitude spectra uh, the strongest feature is a Keplerian frequency of the of the spot orbiting close close to ISCO, and there are strong harmonics. Uh, of course, uh, it is uh, heavily inclination dependent, and also for such a spot, uh, we are assuming uh, slightly eccentric motion. 
So there are also some features uh, which are arising due to the eccentricity of orbit. Uh, this red curve is, I think, uh, okay, there is. Um, okay, it is the orbit uh, which in terms of uh, this relative eccentricity and in terms of, uh, say, radial epicyclic frequency, it is, uh, say, amplitude of uh, 1 m uh, for, uh, for the radial oscillation, and that the orbit is uh, around 7 m, say. So it is, uh, it is the particle which is uh, really close to, close to ISCO. So these are the expectations, and then when we uh, when we are uh, trying uh, to guess what can be seen uh, on left i have uh, a simulation for rxt and the colors are just different spot luminosities uh, i will not go to the details but uh, we basically took a small luminosity and increase it up to the point when we can see something above the noise and so you can see that uh, for this highest luminosity, uh, there is some feature which uh, uh, is detectable, but for low luminosities, uh, everything is inside the, the noise. Of course, you can <coughs> make more clever analysis and you can be more efficient in detecting this, especially because in the simplified case, it is the harmonic signal. We of course do also the uh, change of ID and uh, really peaks, not delta functions. But uh, this example, I think, is uh, sufficient for what I would like to show. Uh, so when we take the same situation, but for the for the other instrument for uh, for the loft, then even for this lost. Uh, luminosity of the spot, it is already possible uh, to detect uh, Keplerian frequency of the spot here and also uh, it's uh, harmonic. And uh, for slightly higher luminosities of the spot, uh, there is basically a whole complex of frequencies uh, you can detect in the, in the power spectra. In this concrete case, for this concrete parameterism of the simulation, uh, we see uh, radial frequency uh, or radial epicyclic frequency of the, of, of the feature, Keplerian harmonics, and uh, here uh, it is uh, actually some harmonic of the radial frequency uh, plus uh, something which is going from the harmonic of pre precession frequency, which, not, which is not seen here. But it's not much, it's not much uh, uh, important uh, since it's uh, really parameter depend dependent. But it nicely shows that uh, basically, if sometimes we see, uh, say, significant or sometimes significant, sometimes insignificant features which uh, uh, are or may be in power spectra, then if this uh, has something to do with such uh, features in the disk, then uh, with the loft. Uh, it should be possible to really identify uh, the properties uh, of, uh, of such a setup. Then uh, we also, as I said, uh, made uh, a little bit uh, more complicated, but still uh, not, uh, but still simple uh, simulations uh, with toy models. Uh, uh, attempting to simulate something like double peak QPOs, uh, either with the spots or with the uh, oscillating uh, torus. Uh, for the torus, okay, here for instance we have spots around some preferred radii uh, and uh, these spots have some uh, distribution in space or there is also, there can be some uh, time behavior of, of spots and also for the torus, we uh, assume, I will, on next transparency, I will show uh, the result for torus, which is uh, slowly moving closer to the hole and passing uh, resonant orbit. So, uh, these are examples 
uh, for such situations uh, here uh, some spot uh, model it is one it is the other one here i have third one these are basically different setups of, uh, of simulations and uh, here uh, i have torus we are also uh, using different setups for, for such a tour. I also I have to mention that uh, we are using the, actually, two, uh, two uh, s different codes for, uh, for doing the ray tracing. We are using the uh, code of uh, Prague Group uh, developed by Vladimir Paras and uh, Michal Lovčák. And we are also starting to use the code uh, developed by Pavel Bakala. Uh, so uh, with these codes, uh, we made it for several setups of spots. Uh, I have to say that these spots are really small spots. Uh, and uh, in several situations, we are finding uh, this better instrument, the future instrument. We are finding clear harmonics uh, in the case of the uh, spot simulations. And uh, of course there is large parameter space and we are still simplifying a lot. Uh, so in some cases, uh, these harmonics are not detectable. And uh, basically when we are trying to be more realistic, uh, there is tension to erase the harmonics rather than to emphasize them. Uh, for the torus, we assumed at this transparency, it is uh, in fact uh, exactly the, to the setup which was uh, assumed previously by Michal Lusa in, in his paper. So there are no harmonics. Okay, we are also at the moment uh, playing with the spots which are elongated. Uh, uh, so there are kind of snake features in the, in the aggression disk. And in that case, is, uh, the precession frequencies uh, are amplified. So here you can see an uh, example of a simulation uh, of elongated spot close to ISCO, where, uh, the, where the line steering precession frequency is uh, quite detectable. And, uh, and actually, also the, the vertical with uh, with uh, okay, vertical frequency and Keplerian frequency, uh, and also the the radial precession frequency are basically uh, can be found. Again, it depends a lot of parameters, and uh, dependently where are you in the parameter space, uh, you amplify uh, only some of these frequencies. Uh, again, I'm not going. Uh, to discuss the parameter space. But uh, it seems that there could be chance to observe uh, really um, something like that with, uh, with the loft. And OK, that's in fact uh, the end of, uh, of my presentation. So my conclusions are that uh, for, for features which are like small spots, uh, then when we are detecting something uh, uh, with this uh, with RHTE, just a little bit, then there is a really good chance to observe Keplerian frequency and uh, its harmonics. Perhaps also something connected to radial frequency with the loft. For elongated spots, it seems that there could be chance to observe the whole complex of, of frequencies. And in fact, my main con conclusion is uh, connected to this comparison of toy models. Uh, well, I'm convinced that uh, this possibility to, uh, to follow uh, the, the harmonic content of the signal uh, could be really helpful uh, to uh, in this uh, looking for right QPO models. Uh, since, as I said, uh, these harmonics, uh, they are kind of naturally present for some models, uh, but of course only for some setups. 
So it would really help uh, out uh, to uh, to eliminate the models <coughs> and also the parameter space for given models. Okay, it's 